Hello YouTube, welcome back to Happy Hour. Today, we've got Cuddy Sark, Cuddy Sark Prohibition. Hello YouTube, welcome back to Happy Hour. Today we've got a very nice whiskey. The end. Bye. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we've got Cuddy Sark Prohibition. It's the Prohibition edition. Uh, it's a blended Scotch whiskey. So Cuddy Sark is a pretty, pretty famous brand. They've been around a long time. Um, I would think, I think they're considered kind of a low shelf, right? A blended whiskey. I have historically, at least in my mind, always put the brand with the, maybe with the Ballantines and the Grants and the yeah, the Bells, just, yeah, like low-end, inexpensive, sub-$20 whiskeys usually for a bottle. Um, not that, they're not bad, they're just, they're just low-end, mass-produced, 40 percenters. They get the job done, and they're generally good for mixing. And even Cuddy Sark I've had a few times at a bar. Um, you know, maybe the crappier bars that don't have a great selection of whiskey, usually they'll have Cuddy, and I don't mind a little Cuddy uh, with an ice cube or even neat. But this Prohibition blend, so I'd never heard of it. About a year ago, I walked into my old liquor store where I used to live, and I saw, I was just looking for something cheap, something just to get down, get down the hatch for the weekend. <laughs> and I saw down on the bottom shelf, these cool black bottles. There was two of them, one liter bottles. And I saw it was Cuddy Sark, and then it was just this Prohibition edition. I saw it was uh, unchill filtered, 50%, so 100 proof. Uh, one liter, and they were $22.99. So that was the end of that. I grabbed both of them and went home. Now the first bottle, I'll confess, I think only lasted that weekend. I wasn't really scotch tasting, if you get my drift. It was a kind of a party weekend with some friends and that, the first bottle didn't last very long, but I remember I enjoyed it. I remember specifically being like, wow, this is way better than I was expecting. Now, hence the second bottle sat on the shelf for this almost this whole last year, and I decided to crack it open about, a, well, it's about two weeks ago, and get back into it, and wow, was I even more pleasantly surprised again. So yeah, um, let's just crack it and get into it. It's almost empty. Woo! That's why I'm doing this video. The only thing I don't like about it as well, there's a, maybe a few things, but the main thing is this black bottle is cool. It looks cool on the shelf but you have no idea how much is left in it. So you got to do the old shake -a And I did the old shake -a and I was like, oh, that's getting a little bit low. So time to do a video. Oh, wow. Let's get it all in there. Okay, good timing. <laughs> it's every, every drop out of it. All right, so this bottle's killed too. That's fine. I'll, hopefully I'll find another one. I don't know if I'll find it for that price, but... So let's get on the nose. Man, it smells good! Spicy, peppery. I even get a little bit, I get a little bit of kind of ether, a little bit of the alcohol nose. I get a little bit of lemon. And almost like a... Hmm, is it like a buttered corn or like... Or like a popcorn or something, a little bit of a, there's no peat, but almost like a, it reminds me kind of like a burnt popcorn or something. But yeah, malty. You know what really, the second time around, or at least the second bottle, I was so surprised that this is a blended whiskey. I don't know how much grain, how much malt, how much whatever in it, but I swear to God that if you gave me a glass of this, my first instinct would be that this was a single malt. Maybe not a high, super high quality single malt, but I smell a lot of malted whiskey. I don't smell a ton of grain. I don't get along with grain whiskeys generally very much. I shouldn't say they don't get along with them, but I can usually pick them out pretty quickly. But this one, for some reason, it's really well balanced. I do get a little bit of the grain whiskey, kind of the, that ethery, almost polish, polishy, alcoholy note. But I get, I get a lot of malt whiskey. Like I said, I get sweets, a little, almost a little bit of mandarin orange too. But a lot of like pepper. It says right on the back, cracked black pepper and toffee. I don't get quite a bit, I don't get toffee, I don't think, but definitely get the pepper. It's really, really nice. It's really nice. Let's have a sip. That's 
I tell you, the palate's even better than the nose. The palate tastes like a single malt whiskey to me. With, it tastes like a single malt whiskey to me. I could be fooled if I was doing the blind. I could definitely be fooled that this was just pure malt. I do get a little bit of grain, but I'm wondering how much of that is I, it's very malty. It's sweet. You know what, I'm almost, I think I get a bit of the toffee, like a sweet caramel on the, on the taste. Mm, it's got a nice mouth feel. It's quite coating. It's 50%. It doesn't drink that hot. It's really sweet. I get a lot of the malty sweetness. It's another reason why I think it's heavily malt. A lot of malted whiskeys in here. Because I get that kind of standard, that sweet cereal notes that I get from, from some of the some malt whiskeys. Um, yeah, I get almost a little bit of orange, a little bit of caramel, lots of black pepper, or maybe even like white, eh, peppery spices. It is incredibly enjoyable. And for the price that this is going for, I almost feel crappy doing a review about it because I kind of want to hog them all for myself. But yeah, this is highly enjoyable. I said, I, I, I told you I got it for 22, or I think it was 22 99 or 23 bucks, something like that for each of these liter bottles. I don't think that's the normal price. I feel like the standard going rate is maybe closer to the high 20s, maybe 30. But even at that, if this was a liter bottle for 30 bucks, I would be very happy with it. I would probably take this even, I would take this over most of the Johnny Walkers. Well, at least Johnny Walkers up to maybe the green label, I would take this over. Um, what other drink, like, there's nothing else that really in that price range. Um, you know, even Naked Grouse blended malt, it's a heavily sherry blended malt, but that's 30 bucks. It's just, it's unique. It's great. It's really good. I don't know what else to say. It's fantastic for its price, especially. It's really surprising. I was not expecting this from, from you know, I see that label, that Cuddy Sark label that's probably been ingrained in my brain for 40 years, seeing it everywhere and not really thinking of high-end whiskey or I don't even want to, I don't want to sound like a snob because that's not my gig, but it just had that, 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 you know, the, the Cuddy, Cuddy Sark label ingrained in my brain and that never had a connotation of, wow, that's really good whiskey. This has broken that connotation. So you see, you can't always judge a book by its cover. So somebody said that once, I think so. And in this case, they're absolutely correct. Mm. Cuddy Sark Prohibition Edition. Three thumbs up. If you uh, if you get a chance to see it on your shelf, that's a reasonable price. Pick it up. Yeah, I don't think you can go wrong. I was gonna add some water to it. I'm gonna do that now, but it doesn't really matter. We're not gonna prolong the video. I'll do one more quick taste. I don't remember. Do I add water to this? I think I have been adding water to it. And it holds up pretty good. I don't think it, I remember not adding too much. It just kind of brought a little bit of the heat down a hair. Didn't change the flavors too much, but. Anyways, thanks for watching Happy Hour. If you liked, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe, that would be cool too. I'd appreciate it. Cuddy Sark Prohibition. Who? what a thunk it. Cheers, see ya.